All right. So hello, everyone. Kwe, Uchilidah, and welcome to the first session of our female coaching series. The Women and Girls Task Force is incredibly excited for these monthly sessions, and we're so happy that you all are able to join us tonight. My name is Kirsty Mason, and I'm the Community Coaching Lead at Canadian Sports Centre Atlantic. I'm also a ringette coach, athlete, board member, and like many of you, a female leader. I'm so honored to be part of the Women and Girls Task Force and the MC of these coaching series, where we learn from a variety of influential presenters over the coming months. In addition to the Canadian Sports Centre Atlantic, I would also like to thank the following partners who have helped shape this extraordinary event. That includes Sport Nova Scotia, Support for Sport, Nova Scotia Gaming, and the Government of Nova Scotia Communities, Culture, and Heritage. On behalf of the Women and Girls Task Force and our partners, I would like to acknowledge that we reside, or we are located in Mi'kma'ki, the ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. And we know that there are people joining us from across Canada, so we welcome you all to share where you currently reside. So before we get started, we just want to go over a few housekeeping items. So as mentioned, please keep your camera and your microphone muted for the duration of the presentation, and then we can open it up for the breakout rooms. If you want to have a more enjoyable experience, we ask that you change your viewing to speaker view. So by going in the top right corner, you can click the view and change the speaker so you can only see the person who is speaking. And then as mentioned before, we ask that you change your username to your full name and include your NCCP number if you are a coach so that you can receive credit. During the presentation, if you have any questions, please, uh, please uh, go to the chat box. So that's found at the bottom of your Zoom and direct it to everyone. But if you wanna make it anonymous, please direct it to our, our host. So that's Janice or myself, and we will be glad to uh, ask those questions at the end. And we will provide some time at the end to ask questions aloud if you'd like. If you're experiencing any technical difficulties or have general questions, please message the host. And again, their usernames will say host in it. And the last thing brings us to our next slide. So we ask that everyone please actively participate in any polls that come out throughout the presentation. So our first poll is where are you joining us from in Nova Scotia or in the Atlantic provinces or from outside of the Maritimes and what is your role in sport? So we'll give you a minute to answer that. So, so far it looks like majority are from central region. We do have quite a few from joining outside of the Atlantic provinces. So that's great. And even one from outside of Canada, which is interesting. So I'd love to know where you're joining us from. So we'll just give another five seconds, get your votes in. Great. So majority again are from Central. We have some joining from Valley, Fundy, South Shore, Cape Breton and Highland. And then quite a few from outside of Nova Scotia. So that's great. And in terms of roles, we have majority coaches, which is expected in a coaching series and quite a few athletes. I'm sure there's some ringette athletes out there because we, we my the team that I coach, we've been pushing in on them to join. So thank you guys for coming tonight. And it looks like we have quite a few board members, volunteers, awesome. Thank you for participating in that. Okay, so this brings us to our panel. And before we get started, we just want to set the tone with a quick two minute video. So there you go.
So hopefully you all enjoyed that video. Um, I know I've watched that like three or four times today and it still gives me chills. So um, we'll definitely circulate it in our follow-up email too. So you guys can continue to share that motivational video with, uh, with your fellow female sport leaders. Uh, so now let's get started. I'm so happy to announce that we have two fantastic inspirational female leaders joining us today. And uh, first though, I want to introduce our moderator who is Natasha Burgess Johnson. And Natasha is the uh, coaching lead at Canadian Sports Centre Atlantic, but she's also a mother, board member, and a multi-sport coach. So Natasha, you can take it away from here. Yeah, awesome. Thank you, Kirsty. And yeah, I just want to um, also share that Anne sent us that video today and I watched it at work and I was just covered in goosebumps. So I do hope you guys enjoyed that video and that it just set us up so nicely for tonight and the conversation around strong female leaders. And, you know, I don't know how many of you, but I had no idea the number of female prime ministers and those in leadership positions around the world. So pretty neat tonight to zero in and focus on, you know, what do we have here in Canada? speak to some big leaders here and you know what can you do also really exciting to see so many athletes online tonight I didn't expect that one so lots of future leaders that I hope we continue to see and build into sport so very excited for tonight um Kirstie can you go to our next slide so I can introduce Anne Awesome, thank you. So um, as Kirsty said, we have two fantastic panelists tonight that I'm very excited about. Both have huge resumes. Um, so I'm gonna first share Anne. So Anne was an elite athlete for most of her life. She was a member of Canada's national swim team for many years. She earned a silver medal at the 1979 World University Games in the uh, 200 meter back, uh, breaststroke, sorry. After her swimming career, she focused on curling. And since the early 80s, she's competed with distinction at every major event she entered. She was consistently ranked as one of Canada's foremost curlers, winning the Ontario Women's Curling Championships in 93, 94, 98, and 2000. She's twice led her team to the finals at the Scott Tournament of Hearts in 98 and 2000. She's a passionate, creative, and inspiring leader. And Anne has more than 25 years of management experience with national sport organizations. Prior to becoming CEO of Own the Podium, which is where she is now, Anne held the position of Director of Summer Sport with Own the Podium, and she's previously worked with Kanukaya Canada in the role of Director General, and has worked with the Commission for Inclusion of Athletes with a Disability and the Canadian Federation of Sport Organization for the Disabled. Anne's lifelong experience in sport as an athlete and professional is complemented by an extensive volunteer experience with a number of organizations um, including CAUSE, the Women's Tour of Curling, and Special Olympics Canada. And so thank you, Anne, for agreeing to work with us tonight. And I hope you guys uh, love getting to hear from her. And our next panelist, there we go, is Corey Chevery. And Corey is joining us. Sorry, one second, I have to switch over. Um, I'm very excited to hear from Corey as well tonight. Um, so Corey became the first female named to be a full-time assistant with a men's hockey program in U sports, so in university sport history, when she joined Ryerson University in 2016. In 2019, she was on the coaching staff for the gold medal winning U18 Canadian national team and the U18 world championship team in Japan. She's been named the head coach of Team Ontario in November 2019 for the U18 National Championships in which they captured gold. And in 2020, she was named the National Women's Team World Championship coaching staff, which was supposed to happen here in Halifax, Nova Scotia, and we hope still will at some point. She herself has played six seasons in the Canadian Women's Hockey League, the uh, CWHL, with the Toronto Furies, and prior to that, was a three-time AUS first-time All-Star, team captain, academic All-Canadian, and two-time female athlete of the year when she played at St. Mary's University in Halifax. So very excited to have her welcome us um, or be with us as well tonight with her Halifax tie and uh, breaking barriers in the coaching world. So thank you both for joining us. So now I'll ask you guys if you want to go to speaker mode up in your corner so that you can see our two panelists um, as they speak. We have some questions to ask them. So Anne, I am going to launch off with you and we're just going to ask you to please share on how you got to where you are today. And I know that is a long story that involves many things, but what would you like to share with us from that? Well, 
first take myself off mute. So uh, thank you very much. It's truly a privilege to be here tonight and to see so many wonderful, inspiring leaders. And I hope I have an opportunity to meet some of you in, in person uh, in the months and years ahead. So yeah, it's a long journey that started probably before most of you were born. So um, we'll just, maybe I'll just stop. No, I'm just kidding. We won't stop there. But let me give you a quick week, recap of my journey. So my first job in sport management was as an interim program coordinator with Gymnastics Canada. I filled in for uh, the full-time program coordinator who went on parental leave and she elected not to come back to her job. So I was offered the full-time role and that certainly was pretty fortunate for me and I stayed in that role for, for three years. My next role was as executive director of a small multi-sport organization uh, supporting athletes with disabilities and I stayed there for six years really learning what was involved in leading an organization. From there, I went to um, CEO of Canoe Kayak Canada and I stayed there for a long time, 13 years, which is long to be with one particular organization, but I, I quickly drew, uh, you know, became very passionate about the sport and, and still to this day, I'm very passionate about Canoe Kayak and have many friends from my time there. And then I moved on to On the Podium. Um, I think it's fair to say that in each of those roles, um, I focused on doing the best that I could possibly do. And that's still my approach in, in what I do today in, 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 uh, with On the Podium. In, in the early part of my career, I wasn't really thinking about what's next or where do I want to go. It was very much focused on trying to learn as much as I could from the people that I worked with and with the unique environments in each organization that I was involved in. I, I viewed each position as an opportunity for growth and, and learning. Uh, and it was um, very important for me to uh, still have fun and enjoy each and every day. And um, I still think I have the best job in the world in high performance sport, the world, not just Canada. I mean, there's nothing more exciting than being there to see Canada's uh, flag, uh, you know, go up behind the podium and to sing the national anthem and to know that as an organization, we've had a positive impact on Canada's athletes and coaches. Yeah, that's fantastic. Thank you, Anne. And yeah, I think you could fill our time tonight talking in detail through your journey. So you did a fantastic job summarizing very briefly. Good job. Um, Corey, I'm going to send it over to you for the same question. So can you please share how you got to where you are today and how you've broken that barrier and uh, are coaching men's hockey? How did you end up there? Yeah, thank you very much uh, for having me tonight. It's great to see this many um, women in leadership on, on the same call. Um, it's funny that you started out with a video of prime ministers and presidents because I'm actually named after Corazon Aquino, who was the Filipino president uh, from, I think, 1986 to 1992. So that's that kind cool. of a fun fact about me. Um, and um, wow, uh, I think I look up to you. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I've been playing hockey, coaching hockey. Uh, being involved in sport for as long as I can remember, remember my whole life. Um, I think probably one of the best decisions I ever made was back in 2010 when uh, the Toronto Furies of the CWHL drafted me. So I, I packed up my little Toyota Tercel 1999 and just kind of moved cross country from New Glasgow to Toronto, not really knowing where I was going to live, um, kind of figuring it out along the way. I knew I had a few teammates that I could live with until I figured that out. But I think uh, that was one of the best deci decisions I ever made was putting myself uh, in kind of a, a place like Toronto where I was able to connect and meet new people, uh, work with um, amazing athletes. And uh, that was kind of where it all kind of started for me. Uh, fast forward to 2013 and, and I was working at Ryerson University uh, as kind of a skate training specialist. So I was running uh, camps, I was doing skill development. Um, I had some part-time staff that I was managing. Um, and then after about three years in that role, um, I actually had a supervisor who reached out to me and kind of said, hey, do you wanna do some career development? Uh, much like Anne said, I wasn't really I was like, what's career development? Like, what's what, what's next for me? Um, and she kind of got me thinking about, hey, you know, I think that you'd make a really good coach. And I said, well, you know, there's not uh, 
there's not a lot of room on the women's side at that time. Uh, there was about three or four female coaches who would have had kind of seniority on me. And at the time, uh, the Ryerson men's head coach was uh, set to retire. And so she said, you know, hey, what about coaching on the men's side of the game? And I was like, well, yeah, that would be great. It can't be that much different. Um, so I, um, I kind of had my mind set on that and, you know, I had a conversation with, with one of the assistant coaches at the time and just said, Hey, you know what? Like, I know that Graham is probably going to be retiring sometime soon. And, um, I'm probably going to apply for the position, just giving you the heads up. Uh, and again, it was kind of like the best decision I ever made, uh, to jump feet first into men's hockey. Um, a bit daunting, uh, to start. And, uh, but I think that, you know, growing up in a small town of New Glasgow, Nova Scotia, I played with the boys, um, on every sports team. So I just thought, Hey, this is, this is normal. This is natural. Um, until I was kind of the only person to do it. So, um, that's how, uh, I started on the men's side of the game. I'm still, I'm still working with them. I'm still working with Ryerson. And, and fortunately for me, um, you know, my hard work has paid off on the female side of the game as well. And, and getting a foot in the door with Hockey Canada and Team Ontario. Also, I did some provincial work with Hockey Nova Scotia as well. Can't forget Hockey Nova Scotia. I love it. <laughs> um, and, uh, and so, you know, I've just tried to make sure that I'm, I'm doing the best that I can do. And, and, uh, it has really, my, my career has kind of propelled. So it's been a, it's been a whirlwind of six years, but it's been amazing. I bet. Yeah. That's very quick to go through that. So also some great messages for all the coaches online is the, you know, jump in with two feet. Like you really had faith and you followed and did what you thought was, was best and you put yourself out there, which is so important. So great message in that for sure. So I'm going to go back and forth and ask you guys both a couple of these, these questions as we do, as we go. Um, and actually, I'm going to start with you on this one, Corey, so you can just keep on rolling. Uh, did you have any mentors along the way, especially over the last six years, as you sort of built yourself up in this role? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I mean, I always have kind of looked up to my mom, who is an entrepreneur and a teacher. She's always kind of guided me. Uh, she was also my boss at one time. So I got to learn wow. from her. Um, I still ask her a ton of questions when it comes to leadership. Um, so that's kind of on like the personal side. Um, on the hockey side, to be honest, there's so many, there's so many people to mention. Um, Lisa Haley, um, also from Pictou County, Nova Scotia. Uh, my head coach at Ryerson, Johnny Duco. Mel Davidson um, has been a great uh, resource for me. Um, Howie Draper. Uh, Gina Kingsbury. I mean, there's so many I could name. I think the biggest piece for me is that I'm always trying to learn. I don't think that, you know, there'll ever be a point where I think I know it all. And, um, you know, I, I wouldn't say that I have a specific mentor uh, per se, because I, I really value my ability to build relationships and you know, the ability to be able to pick up the phone and call Mel Davidson and be like, hey, what do you think about this situation? Um, so, you know, that's kind of the direction that I go, kind of like what Ann said earlier, just always trying to find new ways to teach something, new ways to learn something, new ways to make a difference in someone's li life. And I think that, you know, having that kind of foundation of key people around you is just so important for everybody on the call. I love that. Thank you so much, Corey. And Anne, I'm going to turn it over to you and ask a um, two-part question for yourself is, you know, did you have any mentors along your journey that really meant a lot? And then second to that, you're now a mentor to so many in sport. So do you have any recommendations for how to, how to be that person or be that role, that mentor role? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I've had many mentors um, similar to Corey's experience. Um, it started very early with my parents, both my mother and my father, and it was kind of instilled in us as, you know, children that if you're going to do anything, then you better give 100% effort. And so that's how we live every day. And when we were growing up and how I live every day today, um, my brother, uh, my older brother is also a very valuable mentor to me. He's working in a senior position in sport management now. So we're actually working in the same field. So that, that's really fun. And, and we, we support each other and we're always there to, um, 
you know, to provide advice and problem solve and just, you know, have some trusted and courageous conversations. I've also had some mentors emerge through what might be, you know, uh, a bit unusual um, circumstances. So certainly I've had two board chairs. So essentially people who are my bosses that I've, after I, they had left or finished their term that I had continued to really engage with and had established really close relationship with. And they still to this day are trusted advisors for me and board members who I still reach out to all the time. So I, I think, um, you know, part of, of my advice to the to the women and leaders on, on in the call is to is to work really hard at establishing a good network, a network of people that you can reach out to to share best practices and get advice and problem solve and and just really have some trusted and courageous conversations. So, as that network is developed, then you're able to identify mentors that um, are valuable for you. And and the second part of your question was really around how you go about finding a mentor and, and be a good mentor to, to someone. So in terms of finding a mentor, when you meet someone, I think it's really important that you, you find out what, um, you know, what, what you can, that they can learn something from you. Uh, what is it that they're looking for? Uh, what, what area or skill or characteristic that they would like to develop? What, what is the area that they feel that you might be able to add value and vice versa. Mentoring is very much a two-way relationship. It's not all, all one way. There, there needs to be some value from uh, the mentee to the mentor and from the mentor to the mentee. So it's, it's very much about a two-way relationship. I think you need to invest time in the relationship and be a really good listener. Uh, to be an effective uh, mentor and make it valuable um, for them each and every time that you you interact. Um, as far as being a mentor um, to to someone else, I mean, I, I think again, being a, a good good listener, asking questions, identifying what what they're looking for. I mentioned that, and um, you know, being being very much a, you know an advisor, a supporter. Uh, someone who can sh can a safe place to share your thoughts and feelings, your struggles, and, and once you've provided advice uh, to a, a mentee, you know, create a safe place for them to come back and and you to ask, well, how did it go? You know, on a scale of one to ten, was it a six or a seven? And how do we make it a nine or an eight and a half? So, very much an open, trusted, safe uh, conversation between the mentor and the mentee. Fantastic. Thank you, Anne. That's great advice. And also to all of our coaches on the line to Anne's point on finding a mentor. So, you know, if we, we have heard from our coaches as well, they're out there seeking and maybe not finding someone or not having the courage to come forward. Um, Kirsty will speak at the, at the very end during the social, but we do have some formal mentorship programs that can sort of help you get in the door and set up uh, your first mentorship if you're seeking one and haven't been able to find that person yet. Um, Corey, I'm going to turn it over to you for your next for our next question, and that is, what barriers or challenges have you faced as a leader, and how did you overcome them? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, being in the field that I'm in, and kind of being the first female to work with a men's hockey team um, as an assistant coach, I think I started off my journey with them being you know, a little quieter, um, trying to be that strong, silent type that, um, you know, you weren't going to be able to break me. And uh, I learned quickly that leadership is about being human. And it's about approaching your athletes, your staff, and your work environment as authentic as you can. And, you know, I'm the type of person that likes to joke around, likes to have fun, um, but when it comes time for business, you know, it's time to, to work hard. So there was definitely a lot of, um, I would say like internal struggle with figuring out and navigating being kind of the only woman in the room a lot. Um, and just how to really get through that barrier. And I realized that, you know what, it's okay to own your success. It's okay to have a voice. And it's even more important to have a voice in that situation. And so it wasn't really until I started realizing that working on your inner self was something that was so important and something that's always going to be um, something that I work on uh, that, 
kind of self-awareness piece is just so important. Once you're okay with who you are um, and what you bring to the table, you're going to be able to serve your athletes, serve your the people around you much better. And uh, so that was something that I definitely needed to overcome. And it, it's still a work in progress, but I started it about three years ago and, and it's only going to help me become a better leader uh, for everybody else. Fantastic. Yeah, I love that. And it is a lot of the work we're doing here with our coaches now, which wasn't always the case, right, is learning about you first. Some of the coaches go, well, why am I doing this? You know, why am I learning about me? I want to learn about my athletes. But you just beautifully put exactly why that's so important. And that same question to you, what have you faced? What barriers have you faced as a leader? And how did you overcome them? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think a whole lot about obstacles or barriers. I mean, I think about opportunities and um, that's kind of, you know, my approach. I'm sure I have to share one thing. Very early on in my career, I was at an international meeting, I don't know, in Eastern Europe somewhere, and there were hardly any women in the room. And I remember this man came up to me and said, well, I take my tea black. And I looked at him and I was like, oh. Well, the tea's right over there, so go help yourself. I'm sure, you know, it, there's cream and sugar there if you'd like to. Any, anyways, but I was like totally struck by, you know, that doesn't happen anymore, fortunately. So that, I think that speaks to um, how many wonderful uh, female leaders and role models and mentors we've all been exposed to over the year. And I actually counted in the video today when you played it, there were 22 of those wow. iconic leaders. So and, you know, in Canada, we're very fortunate to celebrate our accomplished women in every industry, be it sport or business or you name it. Uh, we, we spend, uh, we've been blessed with having so many accomplished uh, uh, female leaders in so many different industries. So, you know, that said, I, I would say um, a, a couple of times I've struggled with establishing relationships, the quality of the relationships that I perceive we need as an organization to be successful. And I'm very much focused on uh, developing strong relationships with people as I, I think it's it's an essential characteristic of, of leadership and of being successful. So there's there's been a couple of occasions when I haven't been able to kind of develop the, the necessary relationship that I feel uh, would really advance what we're trying to, to achieve and have a positive impact on, on the project. So, so what, what did I do? Um, you know, I, I certainly asked for feedback and advice from people who are also involved in, in that particular, uh, you know, whether it was a project or, you know, uh, whatever it was that we were working on as an organization. And I was pretty intentional in trying to find some ways to recognize the individual I was trying to establish a better relationship with. So, um, you know, in many ways to publicly acknowledge them. Uh, where I could find it without it being too artificial. Um, you know, Corey mentioned the, the need for, um, you know, to be genuine and authentic. And I, I would just like to reinforce that. It's a, those are key characteristics of great leaders. And so, but I, you know, without it being, you know, you know, buttering that person up too much, I, I certainly tried to acknowledge that they were having a significant contribution to what we were trying to achieve. I found myself trying to think of a way that I could make it that person's idea, um, you know, whatever, wherever we, whatever we were trying to work on. And I was pretty intentional around trying to um, sort of show gratitude for um, them even trying to engage in the relationship and for their contribution. So um, that, that was hard. I mean, it, it was very, um, you know, I, I would say it wasn't very natural, um, which is not, which is exactly the opposite of being authentic and genuine, but it was critical for the su success of our organization that this relationship improve. So, and now, um, you know, fortunately we've turned the corner on that relationship and the strength of, um, you know, the two organizations working together is, is incredibly, um, incredibly successful. So, Good, good lessons for, you, for me, even just to reflect on, you know, on what happened and, you know, what, what I tried to do about it. Certainly. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that. That's excellent. Um, I think I'm going to keep rolling with you, Anne. What's a trait over all this time that you didn't always have, but you, you managed to develop over your career? 
Yeah, that's a great question. And anytime you are asked these kinds of questions, it really causes you, uh, requires you to take a step back and reflect, be a little more uh, critically reflective and self-reflective. Um, self-awareness is an important, another really important trait. And, um, you know, it's, it's pretty interesting. When I was growing up as a leader, a female leader, and very much where there were more men than there were women in the kind of positions that I held, um, the environment was one where we were encouraged not to show emotion. We were encouraged to just be really, you know, kind of stoic and, you know, men didn't show emotion. So if you wanted to be successful as a female leader, then, you know, you, you don't, you dare get emotional or, you know, don't let the, the side of your neck turn red when you start to get, you know, passionate about something like just be, you know, totally stoic. Right. And so the, the world's changed, fortunately, and that is not what we are seeing in, in great female leaders. Now we are seeing women who are vulnerable, who are again, authentic and genuine, who, um, you know, are, 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 feel comfortable in sharing their passion and, 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 and sharing, um, sharing about themselves, telling their story in a very passionate, uh, profound, meaningful way, sharing, showing feelings. Um, and so, you know, it's pretty much a 180, um, you know, where you've gone from being in an environment where, no, it's not cool. If you want to really advance as a leader, you know, don't show any nonverbal communication, don't show any emotion whatsoever to one where, you know, being vulnerable showing how much you care um, is, you know, I think is respected and um, I think is a, you know, has helped me grow, continue to grow as a leader. That's awesome. Yeah. And I, and I will also echo that is that I always say, I feel like I've grown up in sport and which I have and grown up and now in sport as an administrator. And it's been amazing seeing it over change over time so from yourself in a leadership position and then now you look around Canada and there are a number of others and for the coaches on the line that's happened in coaching as well I remember in my sport starting out as the only um, female in Canada and now you look around and there's lots or you look around and you go well no one's done this and now there's a number of us like Corey uh, breaking barriers so the more we can look around and help and build each other the community will become stronger and we can learn from each other so I love that message. Um, Natasha, yeah. Natasha, I just have one other piece that I'd like to share on this one because, Please um, you know, I think we're, you know, we're becoming so much, uh, this is becoming so much, we're becoming so much more aware of the need to be curious and curiosity is a significant, another significant leadership trait. And, and mm -hmm. it's not something that I came by very naturally and I'm working hard to develop and uh, I've been trying to to be both a better listener and a leader that asks questions that give me a chance to listen, to understand, not just to listen and disregard, because you can listen and disregard, but you can also listen to understand. So being really intentional around asking questions of the people I'm working with, as opposed to, um, yeah, a different approach. So that that's one that I continue to work on as well. That's excellent. Love it. Um, Corey, so I'm going to turn it over to you for a very, very similar question. So what is it something that you've developed over time in your coaching career that you feel you didn't have or weren't strong at at the start of your career? Yeah, I mean, I have to agree with what Anne has said in the vulnerability piece. Um, being vulnerable in my workspace, being vulnerable with the athletes uh, only builds trust and builds that relationship. And you know, I think back to when I was an athlete and, you know, yes, you're working as a team. Um, yes, you can lean on your teammates. At the end of the day, you're accountable to yourself and your teammates. When you become a coach, um, you're now accountable to 23 athletes and seven staff members and all of the stakeholders uh, that come a part of those 30 people who you're involved with. And so, um, something that I've really tried to work on is not feeling the need to be the person who does absolutely everything um, and really leaning on the people around me uh, to help out in cer certain areas, to empower them. Um, it was a, definitely a big area of growth that I needed to, to kind of explore and discover a little bit more um, because 
we all know when we want to get somewhere, we want to get to the top, we have goals, um, a lot of it is put on our shoulders. And so um, actually letting go and letting other people help you was something that I definitely have learned um, pretty quickly over my coaching career. Um, you know, trying to do everything yourself, only, uh, you know, burnout is something that is real. Uh, having those boundaries with the people around you and, um, you know, really letting other people kind of into your inner circle to help you. But that can only happen if you're vulnerable and you create that kind of trusting environment um, that only strengthens those friendships and relationships. So um, that's definitely been something that I've been trying to work on, letting other people in um, and not kind of doing all the work myself. And, and kind of the byproduct of that is you're empowering other people and only helping them with their career and their development at the same time. That's fantastic. And I hope everyone heard um, Corey's message there on letting other people within your circle to help you, because I think that's so important for us um, as coaches and as leaders to learn as early as possible. I know it took me a long time to learn and understand the value in that. So you, again, you beautifully said it, Corey, thank you. Um, and good for you for knowing now and having, you know, time in your career to, to enjoy that. That's excellent. Um, so in the interest of, so yeah, Kirstie's just asking for questions, I believe to everyone. And then in the interest of time, I'm going to wrap up, uh, with the formal questions for you, Corey and Ann, um, so that we can open it up a little bit. So I have one last question for each of you, Corey, I'm going to start with you. What is the biggest piece of advice you've received and what piece of advice do you have for all the women on the call tonight? So two part. That's a hard one. I know. Um, I, th I heard this recently and it's just no one follows someone that's standing still. And Ooh, good one. Um, I think that for me, I'm always trying to um, better myself. I, I like to call it kind of like learning agility, like taking things from other people, taking ideas from different sports, taking ideas from different books and different philosophies. Um, and approaching things in a different way. I think that one of my strengths is that I'm not scared to try new things. Um, yes, it can be scary for sure, but I think the reward of what you get out of it trumps the feeling of being scared. Um, so for me, I'm always trying to revamp what I'm doing, uh, take new things from new people. I've learned so much tonight already on the call um, and just really kind of be the role model that people want to follow and be someone who's trying new things and experimenting with different things. Uh, because I think that that really allows the people around you to feel confident to do that as well. And you know what? failure. I know we all say this, but it is very true. Failure is the best way to move forward and the best way to succeed. And so, yes, there's things that I say on a daily basis, like, oh, I shouldn't have said that, or, oh, maybe I should have approached it this way, but I learn from it. I write it down. And then, you know, I, I go a different direction next time that opportunity comes up. So I just always try to lead by example and be somebody that others want to follow. I love that. And I love your like two feet forward with your whole sort of talk tonight. It's been like you're jumping in with two feet and you're just committing to it and doing it differently. So I definitely love that message. And I'm sure this rings through in your sport as well. But in mine, it was always if you're not falling, you're not learning, which is sort of what you're getting at as well. Yeah. yeah. So Anne, I'm going to turn it over to you as well. What's the biggest piece of advice you've received? And what would you like to share with the women on the call tonight? Okay, well, I can't nail, I can't narrow it to one. I have to have two, so forgive me. So one we'll is accept that. think big, start small, and scale up. So again, think big, start small, and scale up. You know, a little more personally, I would like to um, reinforce the importance of humility. And humility is another, from my perspective, critical characteristic of great leaders. Um, think of referring to we and us and our, as opposed to I and me and mine. 
it's amazing what you can accomplish when you don't want or need credit for it. And the piece of advice for everyone is um, we need, we, the importance of embracing feedback. Uh, feedback is a critical piece of growing and developing. Ask for feedback, consider it carefully, try not to get defensive um, and, and be aware of that. If you are, ask people if you're appearing to be defensive what, through your nonverbal communication or your verbal communication. Feedback is how we grow and develop. So that, that's what I'd say, Natasha. Fantastic. I love it. Yeah, it's very true. And I think too, there's the journey of learning that maybe our natural response may be defensive and to take time and then accept that feedback. And the more we do it, the stronger we get at, at accepting the feedback, I mean, and, and growing with it. So it's fantastic. Thank you, Anne. We do have, um, so anyone online, please ask some questions if you have them. We do have one I'll start with that either Corey or Anne, whoever wants to answer, can jump in. And um, this person said, they're wondering if you have any specific resources that you have used that you found to be helpful. And I'm assuming they mean in, well, do you want to specify to that person that wrote that question or just in general um, leadership? I'm guessing they're getting to. Just going to give them a second. Anything we can access. Okay. So guys, have you seen any great resources that have been helpful? Well, I've read many books uh, and have, I'm reading more and more books than ever because yeah, I've run out of network con uh, Netflix content. So books what are you are, reading right now, Anne? I'm reading uh, a book called uh, Fierce, uh, Courageous Conversations, Fierce Conversations by Susan... Oh, I'll send it to you. I'll give you, okay. I've got a list of five or six books that I'd be happy to drop you a note and you can circulate. Uh, Brene Brown has some fabulous resources um, as well. So, um, and then there's some really good podcasts on leadership as well. So you can listen to a podcast when you're out running or, you know, walking or whatever you're doing. We have a lot of great podcast lovers. So, Anne, if you have any that are, are really good, um, I know even within our internal staff at the Canadian Sports Centre, we have some podcast lovers. So we would really appreciate that. Corey, what about yourself? Any resources you've read or listened to lately that you uh, find inspiring? Um, I would have to echo um, what Anne is saying in Brene Brown. Um, any of her stuff is excellent. Um, the book Lean In, I've read that as well, um, which was was really great for me in thinking about my career as a female in a very male dominated world, which I'm sure everyone on the call or most people on the call can experience that at one point in their lives. But yeah, I mean, there's tons of stuff out there in terms of podcasts and books. Anytime you can uh, pick up some literature on vulnerability um, is just so key. And I think that that's just something, it's such an uncomfortable space for us to be in. And I think especially as women, like Anne said, we're, you know, especially in like a sporting world, we're expected to be stoic. Um, and so, you know, us being vulnerable, it's kind of like, oh, well, I expected that from her because she's a female. I think that that narrative is changing. And, you know, it's now about how do we educate um, the people around us, male or female, about the power of vulnerability and, and how we build these better uh, relationships. So, like I said, anything from Brene Brown, um, the book Lean In, I just read that recently. Um, and yeah, any podcasts around leadership as well. I can put some in the chat. That would be awesome. Or even if you guys sent it to us, Corey and Ann, if you send it to Kirsty, and we can, yeah, fire it out to everyone. So that's yeah. awesome. And a little plug to those of you on the line. It looked like most of you were in Central Region. If you don't already have the Libby app through the Halifax Regional um, Library, you can get a free library card and there's a ton of audiobooks. So also if you're a podcast lover, audiobook, same thing. And it's all free through the public library. So another good resource for those of you in Halifax. Um, I have one more question that's in the chat and this one's specific to yourself, Corey. If there was ever a time, wondering if there was ever a time when letting someone into your bubble backfired. So for example, they turn out to have different morals than you thought or put you, put you in an uncomfortable situation. Um, I'm sure there have been. Um, I think, uh, I think I can relate to Anne when she said uh, about working with 
with individuals who maybe your values didn't align. Um, and, you know, what I think that I've kind of taken from a situation maybe like that is that you don't have to be best friends with everybody. You don't have to, um, you know, be able to uh, do everything perfectly together. I think that um, that type of stuff is inevitable and it's going to happen. But I think that if you approach the situation uh, respectfully and like Anne said as well, listen to their side of, of kind of where they're coming from, uh, you can have a really productive conversation about any differences that you may have. Um, and so I think that in those situations, although very uncomfortable, um, definitely the approach is uh, respectful, uh, productive, and try to get to the bottom of what is actually occurring. Because sometimes um, it may come across as something that you're doing wrong, and maybe that is in, in fact the, the problem, um, but it could also be something that maybe they're going through uh, that they might need a little more support with um, that's kind of masking as um, a, a, an issue between you two. So I think it's really important to know the facts and ask yourself, like, is this true? Could this be true? Um, and then kind of go from there. I think that uh, having healthy conversations is something that, you know, usually tends to work uh, when, when there's any kind of conflict. You know, and that's really great advice, especially currently in COVID. Um, so I hope everyone kind of heard what Corey said there about understanding what's on the other side there and that um, a lot of people have a lot going on right now that may not be positive and it may be not coming out in the best way. So having empathy and understanding and, and really getting to know uh, the person that you're trying to have that relationship with and understanding what's going on for sure. Great. I'm just going to check one more time for any questions. Um, yeah, we have one more. So we're going to ask this one last question and then we'll wrap this part of the night up. Uh, and again, Anne or Corey, whoever feels like answering, has there been a moment uh, being in a male dominated industry where you were told you don't belong, how did you pick yourself up? And we did have the great tea example from Anne, but do you guys have any others? Yeah, well, fortunately that tea example was um, 40 years ago. So uh, well, maybe not that long, maybe 35 years ago. So I, yeah, it was very early on in my career. Um, you know, and I think, um, I, I don't, I like to think that doesn't happen. Uh, very often, if at all. Um, I think, uh, well, first of all, we need to model the behavior that we want from others, be the person that, that you know, that, you know, that we want others to be. Um, you know, I, and if it happens, I am pretty, pretty honest. I'm, you know, I will, I will have a courageous conversation with someone to say, you know what, this, this doesn't sit right is, you know, I'll, I'll just, I'll be vulnerable. I'll tell them exactly what I'm feeling and, you know, how can we get to a better place? What, what kind of behavior is okay and what kind of behavior is not okay for you and for, for us. And um, yeah, I find out what is causing them to think that way. Um, yeah, I, fortunately, I don't, that hasn't happened uh, to me in a long time. You know, that's okay. And I think that's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and we can add that we can kind of finish there for right now. So we're going to turn it over to Kirsty and ask that you guys all stay online, hopefully, but I really want to give a big thank you to both Anne and Corey for spending the time with us tonight. Again, it is late, you guys stuck it out. Uh, we asked you a lot of questions. So thank you so much. Thank you for all the advice you've given everyone on the call tonight. Thanks, Natasha. And, and I'm happy if you share my email, if, if any of the people in the meeting today would like to reach out for a more private sure. question. I'm uh, Put, put me in your network and, and don't be shy about reaching out uh, anytime. I'm happy to, uh, to, uh, to connect. Okay, thank you so much. Kirsty. Great, thank you so much, Ann and Corey. That was amazing. And I, I really appreciate 
that concise advice you provided too. I've actually been gathering some quotes that I want to put up in my office. So I'm definitely going to use some of those. So thank you so much. And uh, I've already received a few messages uh, from athletes saying how this is motivating them to coach. So I think this is awesome. Um, so for everyone on the call, please stick around. We are going to do some breakout rooms where we would love for you guys to get to know one another as we are continuing this series on up until May. Um, so the instructions are on the screen here. So using the link in the chat box, um, if Janice didn't put the, the, that in there, I can put that there in a second. Um, and just go into your breakout rooms, which will be given to you in a second. Um, on the Jamboard, you'll go to the slide of which your breakout room number is. So if you're in breakout room five, you'll go to slide number five. And on there, it will give you instructions on what to do. So we would like you to indicate what sport you're affiliated with, what your role is, uh, why do you choose to come today, and who is a leader, a female leader in sport that you admire. So just some icebreakers for you guys to connect and maybe find some common ground and, and uh, learn about some other female leaders out there. Um, so we'll put the link in the chat box for you all to join, and then we'll put you into breakout rooms. So I'm gonna stop sharing to do that. And, uh, and I think, Corey and Anne will be leaving at this time. So if everyone would like to thank them and I would like to give another thank you. Thank you so much, Anne and Corey. We really appreciate you taking your time out this evening and uh, providing so much insight. So thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Had a great time. Yeah, it was fun. Bye. All right, so the Jamboard is in there, or the link to the Jamboard is there. And you can now join your breakout rooms. So that was the first of our female coaching series, but we, like, I, like we mentioned earlier, we do have sessions all the way up until May, and then hopefully we'll do some sort of in-person conference in June. So our next session, um, we have a leadership series and a coaching series. So there's two sessions every month. So we have one coming up February 10th and then the next one, February 20th, 24th will be with coaching. And then we have another one in March 10th, March 24th, and then April 14th. And then the Atlantic Coaches Conference is at the end of April and that, that will be hosted virtually this year at a reduced cost. So normally it's in person in the central region and it's usually around like $200 for, for, to attend like a two day conference. This year will be all virtual. So anyone can attend and it will be at a reduced cost. So like a quarter or less of the cost for a two day conference with a similar lineup as was planned for last year. So definitely keep an eye out for all of that. And since this is the coaching series, I wanted to talk about a few coaching opportunities. So a big one in Nova Scotia, and this is exclusive just to Nova Scotian coaches at the moment, unfortunately, but it's an awesome program. So essentially it's a coach recognition program. It's completely free. Any coach can apply for the program, but to be accepted into the program, you have to meet a certain criteria. So you have to be a certified or trained coach in the level indicating your application. So if you're just coaching at the club level, you just need like a community sport initiation training or cert certification. Um, you have to complete some safe sport training that we will provide to you at for free. Um, you have to sign the CAC code of conduct, be in good standing with your PSO and your CSO. Um, so there are quite a few requirements, but once you do meet those, you receive a lot of perks. So you receive an Under Armour kit valued at over $250. You receive access to a communication platform where you can connect with other coaches. Um, you receive discounts to professional development opportunities. So this year you'll receive the Atlantic Coaches Conference for free, for example. Um, and you also have opportunities to meet up with coaches monthly at Coach Socials. So completely free and a lot of perks. I definitely encourage you to apply. So just by going to supportforsport.ca slash VIP, it takes about five minutes and uh, you'll be, uh, once you fill the application, you'll get an email from me with next steps. Other opportunities are webinars. So throughout COVID, we've been offering a lot, a lot of professional development and most can be found on our YouTube. So just by searching Canadian Sports Center Atlantic on YouTube, you should be able to find our page. And we have dozens of YouTube videos on there of our sessions. We actually had one today that's already up there if you wanna check out more information. Uh, but our 
next webinars are uh, February 10th and February 23rd. So the first one's on the business of coaching, and then the second one is on grief and processing due to COVID-19. So definitely a really relevant topic, and Gail is great around the topic of grief. So definitely check that one out. Again, free, virtual, accessible to anyone. And then the last opportunity is the coach mentorship, which Natasha mentioned earlier. It's completely free, and it's for coaches, but also athletes who may be looking to transition into a coach. So we offer a multi-sport program. So you can be paired up with a coach from any sport and we do offer sport specific as well. So you can come to the program, identify a coach within your sport that you wanna be paired with. And then we will formalize the process to ensure that you're getting the best out of the mentorship opportunity. We do pay the mentors. So you do get a small honorarium just as an incentive to ensure that the relationship stays formal and that you're staying in contact with your mentee but it is completely free for the mentee. You get mentorship training through the National Coaching Certification Program. And uh, you also just become part of a bigger network with the fellow mentors in your region. And also we try to keep female coaches together. So you'll uh, be supported by a female leader if you are a mentee. And as a mentor, you'll get to lead a, an up and coming female coach. So it's completely free. If you go onto our Canadian Sports Centre Atlantic website, uh, under coaching, you can find the application there. Again, it only takes a couple minutes and that will start April, 2021 and then continue till March, 2022. And for all the athletes out there that, in, that are interested in getting into coaching, I definitely encourage you to apply as a mentee. So we're a bit over time, but we thank you so much for, for staying online today and, and for joining. And we hope that you got a, a, a lot out of this. I know I did as a coach. Um, so thank you again to Anne and Corey for coming up today and to Natasha for moderating. And thank you to all of you for joining us this evening. And we hope to see you at our next session in February. So goodbye and thank you. <laughs>